lying scumbag, man. Seriously, you're not a good person. What you're doing here is really, really despicable, okay? Do you have any self-respect? Do you feel like your own honesty is important to your character? Just be introspective. Okay, because what you just did then was truly despicable, right? Do me, coward. Because I don't mind people attacking me, honestly. That is when they do it dishonestly. That's when I have issues. So yes, the, the YouTuber, is, his name is Jack Saint. And I can't remember if I've ever heard of him before. I don't have any recollection of me interacting with his videos in the past. His content does look to be very forgettable. What this individual is doing, and his name is Jack Saint, is his attempt to spoil my ability and our ability to really talk about the Mario film. The video, unfortunately, is really, really bad. This is exposing you in a big way to being such a despicable liar that's driven by ideology so much that you will flat out lie and misrepresent, not well, myself, and seems to be what other people have said, to make you, you look smarter and more virtuous so you have a straw man, a boogeyman to fight. Astronomically dishonest, I, I truly scummy. Everyone, I wanna be clear on something, okay? When Shad uh, saw Peach wearing pants and then said, I'm getting really pissed off, that was just his immediate reaction. This is pissing me off. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is They're more. taking away the femininity of a Peach. Peach! Yeah. Princess Peach! Yeah. Of giving her pants. Yeah. Freaking come off her. I don't want to misrepresent him here, okay? Shad saw Peach wearing pants, and he didn't like it, and he criticized it, and he said it pissed him off. Scummy, lying, dishonest. If you are a good person, this is the type of thing that a good person would be extremely embarrassed about. Like, incredibly so. I would be so embarrassed if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I was capable of doing something this dumb and misrepresenting someone to such an extreme level. Did you just cut my clip out? That's what I'll do because I try my very best to be a good person. We'll, we'll, we'll see what he does. Why are you trying to like sit on this high horse about me taking you out of context when you are literally removing the clips that I show? Jack, I'm asking you genuinely, do you consider yourself an honest and decent person? I, it seems like that's what you're trying, you try to present to your audience. I think I'm a morally good person. Do you later say that, you know, I will say, speak the truth even if it upsets you know, my audience. I just, I don't care who gets a little bit triggered, who gets a little bit upset. You remember the part of my video where I say that. You're such a, a valiant, noble person who will always say what he believes. Well, it seems what you actually believe is in deceit. Like if I did something like this where I misrepresented and lied about someone so grossly to vilify them for the sake of me trying to win points for my own, you know, uh, ideological agenda. So once again, Shad, you've completely cut the thing that I said. I'm not saying all political elements in media is team sports. Well, that would show I'm not an honest actor in this. I'm approaching it in bad faith. It's such a dis disingenuous lie. It's very likely it's taking Paul out of context as well. I haven't seen the full context of those clips, but because he's so willing to take things out of context and deceptively edit it, Jack isn't after understanding anyone's positions here. He's after virtue signaling and trying to make himself look smarter than what he really is by belittling and making a mockery of people's actual opinions. Why did you say at the start you were going to take me down? with evidence when for like most of this video you've just said uh, I haven't looked into this but it's pretty stupid I'm pretty sure that he's lying I assume he I assume he's being dishonest wow that's a really good receipt you've that's got evil and vile and dishonest okay you know you did that he is lying here this is a sign of clear maliciousness not stupidity this is a sign of true dishonest vile despair so they gaslight lie to try and convince you this isn't happening or it's fine, it's nothing. Look at the type of people, right, that, that are trying to push back against people like me. I'm a, I'm a cuckold of house gay. These are the tactics that they have to try and resort to because they, they can't engage honestly. If you were to engage honestly with this, well, guess what happens? They expose themselves, right? He is cherry picking clips and disingenuously putting them together to make a false presentation of what our views are on it. Have a look at my review. If I, I say I gave it a five out of 10. And I mentioned this, the more I think about this, the how the more insufferable the film becomes. I think I'm down to a three out of 10 for Lies! 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 You are lies! You zoomed in to hide the fact that I'm now sitting on the side. Um, Shad, 127 in the video, I show a clip of you from the review and it's zoomed out. 
He tries to be that despicable. Uh, disgusting, mate. Bull friggin' crap, you lying scumbag. Surely he can't be that retarded. You're a Christian, man. You're a Christian, man. <laughs> Jack Saint is showing the effects of this mind virus more profoundly than, s than nearly anything I've seen before. Like, close to that absolute insane dishonesty to vilify and belittle the opponent instead of engaging with them Honestly, you literally skipped the entire segment and then just like said, oh, it's stupid. It's a, it's a stretch. Are you really expecting your audience to be this dumb? Almost like he is ideologically possessed, is more interested about winning points for the team than being honest. Kind of like he has this mind virus. You lying scumbag, man. Seriously, you're not a good person. What you're doing here is really, really despicable, okay? Do you have any self-respect? <laughs> yeah, I lost the bet. <laughs> Do you feel like your own honesty is important to your character? Just be introspective, okay? Because what you just did then was truly despicable. You lying scumbag! That is not the actions of a good person. Be honest with yourself. Are you capable of being honest and introspective to you, with yourself? This guy is not trustworthy at all. Full-blown dishonest lying scumbag, right? Like he's shown it. So take heed when you watch that. I urge everyone who has ever watched a Jack Saint video to take heed for how insanely dishonest he's clearly willing to go to the point of deceptively editing clips, okay? To show people saying things in reference to things that they weren't talking about, right? Scummy, deceptive, pathetic. That's evil and vile and dishonest, okay? You know you did that. It shows you what he's willing to do to try and lie. Hark, men of the watch. Hark, men of the watch. In your devotion to me, Lord, you have been deceived by a pretender. I don't take kindly to being made out to be a fool. Fair viewers, we are under siege. The knights are upon us, viewers. Hear ye, hear ye. I call to order my woke armada so that we can push back against this. Brip. I wrote this one out because I, I take this all uh, very seriously. Uh, so last week I made a video talking about the online riot culture war surrounding the recently released Super Mario Bros. film. Uh, the fight around the increasingly nebulous concept of wokeness applied to everything from chocolate mascots... The candy giant most notably changing the green M&M's white go-go bo boots to sneakers. Remember that last year? ...to even the most cultural inoffensive children's media uh, with the hopes of using that media as a kind of political football to build support for your particular chosen ideological faction. Uh, I showed channels like Steven Crowder and Paul Joseph Watson because Mario and Luigi are white men. Here's <laughs> Mario and Luigi, two white men. Record box office figures. Maybe diversity isn't such a strength after all. Uh, reacting to the film's success by calling it an anti-woke triumph. Uh, while by contrast, commentators like Tim Paul responded negatively to the woke ideology of the film. Uh, as expressed by things like uh, Princess Peach being too much of a girl boss feminist. Uh, and Mario being some kind of bumbling buffoon who needs to use power-ups to t help him achieve things. In every Mario game, let's talk about Mario 64 or, um, you know, Mario Galaxy or whatever, Mario doesn't accomplish things through power-ups. In a two-minute segment at the start of the video, I even covered a team of knights who best demonstrated the initial anti-woke reaction to elements of the film, complaining about things like Mario getting beat up, traditional male hero being made look like a goofy idiot, and Princess Peach's voice. That was total mainstream Hollywood girl boss voice. Yeah. And Princess Peach's pants. Princess Peach! Yeah. Of giving her pants. Yeah. Uh, in response to that two minute segment, I have received a two hour long response video produced by the lead knight, Shadowversity. I'm deeply unwell. I watched the whole thing. Like, How can you make this like boring, kind of like two hour long thing where you're constantly repeating yourself and you still can't look for the context of the thing you're talking about? You're actually criticizing me by saying, I assume this is a lie. Is he actually trying to do the thing well, where he's again, like, well, he's not going to watch a two hour long video. Yeah, it's, I it's will. Running. And I have notes.
Shadowversity is a popular YouTube content creator who amassed the following through largely apolitical content covering a range of historical subjects, mainly related to weapons and combat and things like that. Uh, more recently, Shad started to more openly express and advertise his specific political opinions through his media criticism found mainly on his side channel, The Night's Watch, uh, to an extremely mixed reaction from his main audience. Audience. No one had ever had an issue with the fact that I was religious and conservative, but now we have Night's Watch here where I'm more vocal about my beliefs. Mm. Suddenly people really do have an issue with it, where to the point that they can't even watch my content that is completely apolitical on Shadowversity. With his initial reactions and later review of the Super Mario Brothers movie being a kind of boiling point for a lot of disgruntled viewers sick of hearing quite ridiculous reactions from someone they had a lot of respect for. Now, having watched his content covering this and the response video on my own segment, did I misrepresent Shadowversity's issues with the Super Mario Brothers movie? No. This film would have worked so much better and actually have legitimate investment if they made Peach more helpless, honestly. I, I, where she is in a position where she needs assistance, hmm. okay? You know, when she first meets him, she's like, look, I have no other choice. I've got to try and get help. And it's like, why, why do you need help? Um, bad thing happening. I was like, well, to save my brother, I'll help you. But, but, how are you gonna do that? And he's like, I'll do it. I can't risk your life, you need to show me. And then she's like, no one's ever passed this, you know? And, and, and if they show it that this is difficult, and then Mario nails it because of his natural ability, and then he gets the power-ups on top, she's like, you could actually save us, Mario, we need your help. See how it's building his character now, mm. okay? And she can still have like girl boss moments in the sense that she knows the power-ups and he doesn't. And so there'll be moments where she could get a power-up, show him how to use the power-ups, and suddenly his success is reliant on her knowledge, and then they're building each other. And then when she legitimately gets captured by Cooper, she needs to be saved. And Mario is the hero that comes in and saves. You, can you already sense how more kind of fulfilling and engaging this would be? I, I, because she's the girl boss and she starts to, she didn't need to be saved. And so that robs the uh, the stakes when Mario's coming in to save. It's like, what are you gonna do? Who, who cares? You're not needed, Mario. There's a girl boss who can do it all. And so it's very simple storytelling like this that is so offensive to the modern day that for me, it, it, it destroys investment and and because you do need stakes, you do need something to engage you and it's not there in this film as a result. I don't think you're the target audience, Chad. You're asking too many questions. Kids are the target audience <laughs> and guess what? Kids will respond, they, they naturally subconsciously respond to these tropes. Boys love to be the heroes, okay? They love to save, save the damsels in distress. And girls, guess what? They also love to be saved, all right? This is true, okay? And it's not offensive to depict a princess needing to be saved, especially when they can show her doing key things to help the hero save the day, which Peach easily could have done with her knowledge of the world, all right? My daughter would have loved this film just as much with that, but my boys would probably get more out of it and then get a greater eyes because there's a greater heroic payoff in it, which this film doesn't have because you can't have a, a man save a woman now. It annoys me. I have this thing whenever I engage with someone who expresses anti-woke opinions where they seem to have a kind of allergic reaction to the idea of being honest about the views they clearly express uh, when confronted on them. I want to talk about obfuscation and I think this video is a pretty perfect case study of how that happens. I think this is also the part of the video where I'm supposed to say that I recommend you watch all of Shadowversity's two hour response, uh, so they have full context for all of the things that I'm addressing here. Um, so anyway... To me that's kind of the takeaway, where Peach is an insufferable Mary Sue girl boss, Bowser is a simp, and Mario is a punching bag. The movie. Right. Peach is an insufferable Mary Sue girl boss. Okay, so this, this comment, right? was a more comedic, tongue-in-cheek assessment of the film that we give in our review. That's an extreme kind of, if we would uh, look at it, you know, there's very negative light, you could see it like this, but if you kind of notice that, I I'm kind of smiling, winking as I say it, and Tyrant is like, oh, I can't really see it, we're being fun with it. This film, Mario Brothers, right? 
I, I get nothing out of it. To me, Mario basically achieves nothing but apart from being a punching bag. Mario, he does save, you know, um, uh, um, uh, Donkey Kong. He does save Luigi at two points, but at no point do they dare let him save Peach. In actual fact, in reverse, Peach saves him multiple times and he would be dead flat out multiple times if not for Peach. And even the climax is subverted by that. And so there is a, a, like a personal kind of bias I have where I get in order, in unbalanced, inordinately annoyed by annoying modern woke tropes mm -hmm. and this film isn't woke in the sense where no character makes a statement like you know privilege this or bias that or anything like, like what we saw in say the batman where catwoman just comes out with a dumb line or and you can see these things but they are very very just overt like, like unashamed of making peach and it's such an insufferable girl boss. Where being fun with it. Achieves nothing but, apart from being a punching bag. A more comedic tongue in cheek. Unashamed of making Peach. And it's such an insufferable girl boss. This is not what a good person does. So Shad has gone as far as to misrepresent his own views. Shad, you gave it a free. In discussion, and I mentioned this, the more I think about this, the how the more insufferable the film becomes. I think I'm down to a three out of 10 for this film. Let's have a look at my review. If I, I say, I gave it a five out of 10. A five out of 10. Lies. 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 You are lying. Scummy, dishonest. Liar. We just watch your review. You are lying. You, the twelve-year-olds that watch your stuff might be easily fooled, but not us. Not us. <laughs> the five out of ten was just it has poor writing. The payoffs weren't as great. I don't think Maria had nearly you know, as fun uplifting heroic moments, and the story was very bland. What was the poor writing, and why were the payoffs not great? Wait, wait. Okay. Was it because Peach is a girl boss and Mario is too goofy? <laughs> Because that's what you say in the review. Okay. They could have made it more competent, but still have the damsel in distress element that can really empower the heroic character to step up and save the day. Hmm. But they didn't have that. I think there's going to be a subconscious thing, like because people have emotional responses to very classic storytelling tropes because they connect to them. Okay, mm -hmm. guess what? A lot of girls do like to be saved. Okay, they like to be saved by the hero. A lot of guys Ooh. do like to try and save and be the hero as well. And as a as a result, oftentimes those themes resonate and cause a strong emotional reaction. He's a punching bag, and then he gets given a superpower. And because he has that superpower, then he wins. Why are you making me fact check your Super Mario Brothers movie review? Why are you lying about your own opinions about Mario? Okay, but uh, <laughs> hold on with that criticism. I, I, I don't even, I don't even care for Mario, but even I have to defend that. Is that that is literally the the game though? You you get the power ups, That's but you have to go out of your way to get the power ups. There are absolutely problems, and so I, I did. I wasn't interested in the world. I gave it a five out of ten, and the woke elements that annoy me pushed me down to a four. So okay, but that's also just a bigger that's lie. That's also a lie. Because you didn't even give it a four. You were just lying again. Also, I love this. It's a five out of ten, but with the woke elements, is a four out of ten. So it's a four out of ten. This honest, misleading, absolute straw man. Dog crap. So Shadowversity doesn't like the Super Mario Brothers film, and when asked what his issues are, his literal first complaints pertain to the woke ideology he says is reflected in the film. These are incidentally the same complaints he expressed in his initial reactions to early material shown of the film. Yeah, female character, competent, he's such an idiot, I, why do I have to put up with it? Holy crap, this is freaking going woke. It is. Which apparently I, I tricked people into thinking was all one video uh, because of this zoom that I did in, in one of the shots. You notice that it zoomed in much, much more here than the previous clip. So we go back, I'm sitting in the center here. So why did he feel necessary to zoom in on this one? You know why? Because in the review, I'm not sitting in the center. I'm actually sitting on the side. All right, and to try and hide the fact that this is a different clip 
okay, from a different video, because this is from the review, all right, but it seems quite clear that he doesn't want his audience to actually be aware that he is cherry picking clips and disingenuously putting them together to make a false presentation of what our views are on it. He is zoomed in to hide the fact that I'm now sitting on the side. He shows this, you know, Nathan's shoulder, right, but you will notice see what Nathan's wearing in this clip? How he's wearing the chainmail hoodie. And the next one is wearing a brown shirt. But he, he's happy to show Nathan to that side of me because that's the same side I have in the previous video. But he, he hides Tyranth because that would show that, oh, Tyranth isn't to this side of me. Tyranth is actually sitting to the other side of Nathan, okay? So again, a clear example of him purposefully editing something to hide the fact that he is lying here. Well, which is weird because in a different part of the same segment, uh, you can clearly see I showed the full zoomed out shot anyway. Now obviously I know that in the Knight's Realm there may not be the, quite the same level of cinematic education. In cinema there's this thing called the establishing shot, okay? Which is where when you first show something, you try and get the whole scene, and then when you have other shots, you might put a focus on a particular thing at a particular moment. Well that would show I'm not an honest actor in this, I'm approaching it in bad faith. Which you actually see uh, many times in my video, and usually in my videos, it's a kind of, it's a kind of common thing that everyone does. Uh, which I guess Shad didn't think was worth mentioning, uh, even though he made a whole point about it, as a criticism. Why would you do that if you weren't a scumbag? If you weren't a dirty knave? Squirely behavior. <laughs> Medieval insult. A fop. You're a fop, you're a churl, you're a coxcomb, and you're a cumberwall. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if you're hedgeborn. When Sir Shad saw Mario be a bumbling slapstick character and then get upset about it That was only because that was his instant immediate reaction This is just a normal way to respond to seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie trailer I think this is the thing that frustrates me with this Okay, this is the part where she tries to say They What, what are you talking about Peach? You, you know, wearing pants she, She's wearing pants in the film because she was on the motorbike. Is she aware that this is us reacting to the trailer and we don't have that context? <laughs> because when we have that context, did we criticize her wearing? No, we didn't. Makes perfect sense she's wearing pants. Not a problem at all. Didn't even come up. Wasn't on the radar in our review as a criticism because we knew by context it didn't matter, but in the trailer, we didn't know that. It actually looked like they might have been removing the dress entirely, or at least most often, so to have her more often wearing, um, uh, you know, the biker yeah. outfit. It looks like, looks so, like. Does it? Even though, like. Does it, Shad? Yeah, I, she's in the dress, like, several times. Oh my god, okay. Bowser is coming. No problem. Shut up, get it up. <laughs> There's a huge universe out there. Whoa. No pressure. Scummy, lying, dishonest. We not seen the, the movie wasn't even out! You genius! You very smart person! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness, these people, right? I just, I just love that she thinks she's making such a great, intelligent take here when it's making her look like such a silly person because the movie, the, the, the video you're acting to we had not the the movie wasn't even out and she's appealing to the movie like in the movie you would see why she's wearing pants the movie wasn't out do you see how dumb you look? Shad I think it's precious that you think it's like laughable to sort of poke fun at you because you saw Peach in pants and without context got upset about it Shad the unfortunate reality is, in this case, um, people think it's funny that that was your reaction and that you needed justification later on for Princess Peach's pants. That's the thing that's ridiculous. This is pissing me off. You were so distracted about being angry about seeing her in pants and oh, girl boss, right? That you didn't even pay attention to the fact that in the trailer, they show her riding the motorbike. And I understand it's a blind reaction, but that again, hammer homes, hammers 
home the point, why was that your immediate reaction? That is what is being pointed out because it is clearly showing that you have a weird bias. It's almost like you're letting your woke ideology <laughs> infect everything that you watch, which is the, the tiny little point that I was wanting to make that you are completely restating in this video. Traditional male hero being made look like a goofy idiot. <laughs> Traditional male hero. <laughs> Mario. So, this one's an interesting one. I'm glad we could have a little joke. I like that he giggled. He gave a little giggle there, which tells me that for just a moment, we get a little, a nice little moment, like, ha ha, yes. I guess it is funny to refer to Mario <laughs> as a traditional male hero. <laughs> that tells me that there's hope. It's so ridiculous to look at Mario as a traditional male hero, and he shows Mario looking like, you know, perhaps not the stereotypical hero per se, but if you were to try and understand the context of what I'm saying here, you don't need to be particularly smart to figure out. In fact, most people who, you know, hear me talking about clearly know the context of what I'm talking about. Because guess what? I actually explain the context. I say, well, in the review, I say... The fundamental core of Mario's story is what? A very traditional story, as a matter of fact. Most bare bones theme of Mario in the original game was a damsel in distress story. Yes. Save the princess. In the review, I say very clearly that Peach should be a damsel in distress, referencing not because they are inherently superior stories, but that's what the original source material was and they can work great. And if you want to be true to that, that's why Peach should be this character archetype, okay? And in that sense, it's a very traditional story. That's what I mean when I say Mario is a traditional male hero. He is the hero, okay, that comes in and saves the princess, okay, saves the day. That's a very traditional heroic archetype that Mario falls into. Just too much of a high-minded, complex topic for him to comprehend. I don't believe that. And surely he can't be that retarded. Okay. I don't think he's a complete moron, but it also seems like he is trying to portray himself as far smarter than what he is, because he doesn't seem to be smart enough to present an actual logical rebuttal to things that we're saying. He needs to make construct a straw man. Shad, have you ever heard of a movie called Shrek? I'd like to ask you, Shad. In the movie, the main character Shrek saves a princess from a castle. Is Shrek a traditional male hero? Mario mm -hmm. is not a knight in the Mario games. Now, obviously, again, you don't really have much investment in Mario, so you wouldn't particularly care. Um, do you think maybe it's like interesting that Mario isn't a knight, but a, just a plumber, like a, a, a silly little mustachioed plumber guy, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think perhaps that that was a deliberate choice? to make him a non-traditional male hero? Because clearly, this isn't a traditional male hero. <laughs> I include that clip no, of modern times but... where it's like um, Charlie Chaplin's tramp just kind of like sliding between machinery and stuff and it's uh -huh. like very goofy and slapstick. Because that's clearly the reference point for the, the characterization of Mario, right? Is that he's a goofy slapstick character put into the role of a hero. He's never been a traditional male hero. So yeah, the Mario story is a very traditional hero. Like, you didn't say that. You said traditional male hero. Traditional male hero being made look like a goofy idiot. I commented on you saying traditional male hero. Why are you being dishonest about your own work? <laughs> kind of like how at one stage he makes this point about me not showing clips alongside the things I'm saying. Uh, in a segment where he cuts the clips I am showing alongside the things I am saying. Mario is a woke film filled to the brim with wokeness and woke messages. Did we ever say that? Did I ever say that? Because you know, this is the perfect time to show a clip of me saying it to demonstrate me saying the thing that you're claiming I'm saying. Represented here by the Knights Guild. Holy crap, this is freaking going woke. It is. See, I'll take my kids to watch now. I was like, no, like, I don't support subversive woke crap. He's showing our clips and using us as a direct example of people that are saying Mario is a woke film filled to the brim. One end of the spectrum, we have the true believers represented here by the Knights Guild. The Knights recognize the Super Mario Brothers movie for exactly what it is. You took my clips 
out of your video trying to expose me for not including clips. Uh, and then shows the clips later anyway, so we can make a completely different point out of the exact same segment. No, I, I don't support subversive woke crap. Which I don't, but he is trying to say that that is my opinion of the film, that the film is subversive woke crap, when this was my worry that it might be from the trailer reaction. It is the fact that based on this trailer, you concluded that this was subversive woke crap. That is the thing that was being pointed out. I'm sorry that there are clips of you that look bad, but... Yeah, those are that this is you actually expressing how you felt when you saw Mario get hit by a bullet bill and Peach uh, wearing pants and having a goal boss voice. In summation, <laughs> Chad, having watched your trailer reaction and your movie review, uh, you were worried it was going to have goal boss Peach and emasculated woke Mario. Uh, the movie did have those things. Can't have a, a man save a woman now. It's annoys me. Unashamed of making Peach and it's such an insufferable girl boss. And you continue to dislike it. I'm sorry for misrepresenting you. Uh, or the part where he makes a point about me not doing adequate research into other people's videos while openly stating he hasn't bothered to do any research into the videos he's claiming I misrepresented. I would be extremely skeptical of any assessment he has on you know, what other people say, because uh, I haven't seen the full context of those clips, but because he's so willing to take things out of context and deceptively edit it. Yeah, not not at all strawmanning me here by playing assuming. a clip, assuming that I'm lying about it, and then criticizing me for it when you haven't even seen the video. Talk about Mario 64 or, um, you know, Mario Galaxy or whatever. Mario doesn't accomplish things through power-ups. I noticed that you cut Tim off before he continues to talk there, and so I really do not trust your deceptive editing. Now, if what Tim said there was it, and there was no greater context, okay, I'll be incorrect, Mario. It does achieve things with power-ups. I don't understand why you felt the need to do this whole elaborate section if you're not even going to double-check the things you're criticizing me for misrepresenting. Well, I mean, it kind of shows, like, a lack of respect you have for your own viewers that <laughs> you really do think they're just going to take your word for it. Like, I, I do include clips, some of which you've edited out. You're literally just telling your audience to kind of take your word for it that I was deceptively editing Tim. But I also feel the point is that what he's saying is that he achieves a lot of things in the games without power-ups, which he absolutely can do. But the film shows him nearly incapable of achieving anything without power-ups. Do you see the nuance? Again, you don't want to acknowledge You don't me. want to acknowledge the nuance of the thing that you imagined Tim Paul said? Like, you've already ruined this for yourself, because now, even if you go back and look at the videos and then try to, like, frame me as misrepresenting them, you've already put out a whole two-hour video where you spend, presumably, about an hour of it, like, being assuming that I'm lying. Assuming that I'm removing context from what someone is saying. Pull other people down and lie about them instead of engaging with them on the merits of their actual arguments. Shad seems to think so little of his audience that he can literally just point to a segment I did, say, oh, he's probably lying about this, uh, and assume that they'll just like take it for granted. Uh, even when it would quite literally take him about as long as watching the total segment of my video making fun of him to check the videos I'm talking about. Now, again, I don't know if Paul is attributing all the success because of Mario, and in fact, I'd say it's far more likely this isn't the case because uh, Jack, Jack Saint guy here, is such a dis disingenuous liar. It's very likely it's taking Paul out of context as well. This Paul Joseph Watson video is two minutes long. You couldn't watch a two minute long video to check whether or not I was lying. And so I would doubt that that is his total opinion. I would doubt, as if I have the video like secretly hidden from everyone. Yes, Paul Joseph Watson uh, did say the thing about Mario and Luigi being two white men. Uh, I, I, I didn't use an AI for that. So what Paul seems to be saying here is that a lot of the criticism aimed at the film by mainstream critics is because the Mario film was not as woke as they would have liked it to have been. Very well might be the case, also could be an assumption, I don't have the evidence to say one way or the other, though I have literally seen people criticise many properties for not being woke enough. 
quite literally, okay? And so those type of people have had those criticisms about other properties. It's not a stretch to say that they would have similar criticisms for Mario not being In woke your enough. video where you're pointing out my dishonesty, you're supporting Paul's point here by saying, I don't have the evidence to back up that critics don't like Mario because it's not woke enough, but I don't think it would be a stretch to assume that that would be the case because I've seen people criticize other films for not being woke. It's a strong argument. I do not trust Jack in representing uh, Paul's views here accurately at all, all right? But there is, uh, uh, if you would you try and strong man? I don't think Jack would ever try and strong man again. He is an after a, a discussion in good faith, clearly. Um, but if you were trying to do this, you do often see that there's a certain demographic that is depicted as the villains more often than the heroes, okay? Yeah, especially like modern movies, like modern woke Disney movies, right? Like, I mean, Ant Man 3, right? Who's the villain in that, right? Uh, Kang. Oh, uh, okay, so, uh, The Last Black Panther, right? I mean, that's like the woke movie, right? So, like, the villain that- There's Miss Marvel- Oh, no, that's not a white villain either. Uh, well... Maybe diversity isn't such a strength after all. <laughs> See- uh, Okay, okay, so there's the context right there. That if diversity was their strength and the films were being successful based on diversity, by that logic, you know, movies without that diversity in the main cast, like with Mario, would not be as successful. And so his point is it's successful, trying to disprove that diversity is the strength narrative. Shad, do you think that Mario was successful because they're white men? Do you think that the Mario movie was successful because it starred two white men? The, the, the argument's always, if you make a movie with white people, it won't make money. That's always the argument people are making, right? I always hear that. You can't make money with a movie with a white person in it. People are always saying that. And I'm sure that Shad is going to provide, you know, an exa example. He also calls me juvenile for making a joke about a man drinking chocolate milk while criticizing the woke feminist Captain Marvel trailer. I'm criticizing people for drinking chocolate milk. I, <laughs> that's the level of, uh, you know, honest types of criticism where, where it seems like because later on, you try and mock Jeremy for just, uh, you know, criticizing you because uh, any number of things, okay? And then cuts out the clip right next to it where the same man calls me uh, a male feminist who can't get laid. You are boring as hell, bro. Is this why you're a male feminist? Is this why you can't get laid? Even seem more substantive than trying to criticize someone for chocolate milk. Why did you remove that clip of... of what he actually had said to me, which was mm. the point of the the joke. You're, You're just saying, oh, he made joke. criticisms of you. He made, oh, he made uh, criticisms of you. I showed what criticisms he made of me, like in my video, and you have now clipped that out. Mm. Little bit disingenuous, little bit scummy, little bit, uh, little bit of a Ronyon action, little bit of a Saddle Goose action. Little bit of a uh, fop doodle, like, like I like I'm obligated to be respectful of someone. <laughs> like, yes, these are my house. These are my house colors. Okay. If you want to sink so low as to make fun of me for wearing this, I mean, if you if you want to sink that low, yeah, go for it. You know, I think it's pretty immature to see to be like, oh, this is so silly. Oh, I'm gonna make fun of this. I just think grow up. You know. Every single possible noise is happening right now. They might be circling us specifically. It's the night march! What do you think, tiny wizard? You're not a good person. What you're doing here is really- And so their point still stands if you attempted to actually understand the nuance, but Jack isn't after understanding anyone's positions here. In fact, I also said, I hope the film does great. I'm delighted it's doing well. Right here, quote from Friday Night Tights. I, I said from the beginning, I hope Mario happening. does really well. I didn't like the film, but I'm delighted to see how well it's doing. Oh, and it's it is just taking Disney's lunch at the moment. Is this even on your channel? You can't have is your- this just, Did you want me to just look up random streams that you were in? The thing is, I had no intentions of covering more than the Knights videos discussing the Mario movie. Uh, because honestly, those videos alone were more than enough of a treasure trove of takes 
to draw from. They have he a does, small a little whole, like, moment where he's like, wow, she's pretty bad. Then nothing follows up on that at all for the rest of the film. Yeah. Because a man pursuing a woman's affection because they're attracted to her is problematic in it, so we can't have that. This was never a Shadiversity call-out video, uh, which is why the total time spent poking fun at their reactions is so minuscule. But sure, Shad, uh, if you want to go through other videos you've made, uh, let's do that. For instance, why would anyone get the impression outside of your Mario takes uh, that you have a kind of weird fixation on female characters following specific gender roles, uh, regardless of how those characters were originally presented? They are not making Ellie in this adaptation feel gentle or uh, our... <laughs> Away from hey, her. let her go. I, my daughter loves princesses, and I want to see princesses be saved by princes. I, and uh, you know, uh, things that teach girls to be girls, boys to be boys, and to embrace these wonderful things because it's wonderful. Women are, are amazing, men are amazing, and they do amazing things for each other and society. This isn't about just equality, all right? It's about supremacy. They want power, they want to subvert many traditional values and they're seeing this shift and that's terrible it's me it's it's messing up people's heads and to fight back is teach kids to love who they are as it, and boys to love being boys girls to love being girls growing up to be mothers and fathers and they will be happy. Why would anyone get the impression you don't let your kids watch children's media based on its perceived wokeness? Like as a parent I am not kidding I've gotten to the point where I've had to parental block Disney kids on their devices. The content that was supposed to be G-rated for kids and everything like that, safe for kids and stuff. No, no, they will they will inject what they want into kids media as well to try and counteract. And, and it's just because your parents need to be so vigilant. And so I've literally had to do that. Like they can't watch anything now, basically without my pre-approval. Hmm. Show that came out. Uh, I forgot the name of it. I feel like I need to look it up. Mm. But it's this, it's like High School Musical, but there's zombies, werewolves, and aliens. <laughs> okay, yep. And in the most recent movie, uh, there's a non-binary alien. The fact that it's so friggin' easy for some of the most innocent among us to be exposed to some of the most vile, degenerate crap. Why would people get the impression, in general, that you're kind of close-minded and quick to jump to conclusions about the inclusion of wokeness in media? People either being having gender dysphoria or same-sex attraction from those households, children being raised in those households, has a, like a, like a shockingly high percentage of that, versus conservative households, shows that nature, like nurture does have a part in it, okay? And if there's any influence that I can do, help my kids, grow into life where they can actually find someone they love and conceive life with the person that they love, that uh, there's so much happiness and joy to be found they're, in They're that. trying to say that all this narrative, all the LGBT, you know, agenda is not only equivalent, and I don't think I, I can be fully accepting, you can be fully accepting by acknowledging the difference, saying that there isn't, there is not an equivalence here between a relationship which can conceive life and a relationship that can't. There is a biological non-equivalence there, mm. okay? Accept it as equivalent, and even further, if you do not celebrate and push it, you're a vile, evil bigot. That's bullcrap. Don't accept it, push back against it, embrace tradition. That's what Disney's trying to do. They are trying to normalize stuff to influence kids. The normal biological, you know, relationship between it, for the human race is men and women. We're biologically, literally made to, to go together. And so that should be taught to kids. Absolutely. Femininity, and masculinity. It's actually sacrifice to perform the roles that you are capable of doing better because of your inherent natures as either a man or a woman. And men, when it's protecting and providing, we will sacrifice and do that. Lift the heavier box, open the jars, open the doors. But those are just small reflections of a larger uh, like, uh, obligation for men to step up and do what really needs to be done when the Titanic is sinking and you protect the most vulnerable among us. And for women, it's a matter of sacrifice as well. In sacrifice, in, in creating environments that nurture life. Uh, another aspect to the Buzz Lightyear thing that of course should be addressed because it's been a big part and that is the wokeness in the film exemplified by the gay kiss. Every time there's been social advancement as we wake up, the American story, the human story, is one of constant social awakening and growth. And that's what makes us good. That's how he frames it. I just can't believe that how uninformed this is in regards to the larger context of history. The human story is one of constant social awakening and growth. Look at World War II! <laughs> really? Yeah. 
basically this guy, you know, the guy who owns it all is essentially saying, yeah, I can protect and everything like that. You just got to, mm hmm Again, and if it was an, a vulnerable woman, people would be raising red flags across the board. But because it's, you know, they're both gay, well, not only will they not acknowledge or even bring up these red flags, they will say, if you don't like it, you're a homophobe. Because, and, and they're using it as a shield. He's literally just, pro just, he just, just pro completely projecting this, like, <laughs> obvious homophobic stereotype onto Bill. It's almost like a story of rape and imprisonment against someone's will through coercion and domination and control of resources and protection. Yeah. That is not in you any way presented in the show. That two people, two gay people could fall in love to the point that you're accusing a guy of being rapey. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? The plain fact, which I had already concluded from actually watching your content, is that these are the beliefs expressed by you as widely understood by even your own audience. The weird part is being randomly accused of using jokes you made as examples of actual criticism, uh, which is crazy because not only were they not jokes, they're explicitly the main things you said you didn't like about the film. Now, full disclosure, I was apprehensive about covering a response like this because as it was this two hour long thing, I figured it'd be one of those cases where you can never just quote or paraphrase someone because that's dishonestly taking them out of context. So in the same way Shad got two hours out of a two minute segment, uh, I would have to produce a 200 hour segment. Uh, I immediately felt better as I actually watched the video and realized uh, Sir Shad doesn't actually care about any of that. Uh, for instance, he's happy to take a whole chunk of my video out and then paraphrase it as a ridiculous stretch uh, without even feeling the need to tell his viewers uh, what the thing was that was a stretch. Cool. That's why, for instance, if you ask for Jack Saint's opinion on this, um, he'll probably say something like, It is a fundamentally imperial... So Jack just went on an example of what he might say on the video, and I don't necessarily know if he's being sarcastic or not, but uh, because he's presenting it as a way that he might do it, I'm going to take him at his word here, and his interpretation of it, I actually hope is ironic, because if he's not, that is so much more of a stretch than people seeing the clear and overt elements of Peach being less feminine being more of a girl boss where it's in your face where what he's saying here is really diving deep to try and whip out this type of warped perception of the film but yet when people call out Peach as a girl boss that's pointless irrelevant it's meaningless doesn't mean anything and it's not even there you're kind of making it up but his one if that's valid right and the other is like, holy crap the not only double standard the hypocritical unbalanced perception where his kind of discussion would be more valid when versus the clear girl boss attitudes that and changes that they made with Peach would not be astounding this is another massive mask off moment where it's okay where he does it but if other people do it where it's more obvious and the criticisms is more valid than the warp thing he's trying to push i think the mario brothers movie is pretty you good you didn't play any of the things that i said you literally skipped the entire segment and then just like said oh it's stupid it's a, it's a stretch. Are you really expecting your audience to be this dumb? Uh, so the thing for the record was just pointing out the common traditional fairy tale narrative of good kingdoms with fair rulers worthy of protection, which is an interesting contrast to the real world where this whole monarchical framing would seem like pretty backwards and be pretty thoroughly questioned. The purpose of the statement <laughs> is that when it comes to things that you would ordinarily like label as apolitical, inoffensive media is usually, I think, the better term because when it comes to, you know, something that people just wouldn't, like a fantasy story, for instance, that had, you know, a just fair kingdom, even though in a modern context, we'd probably not see any kingdom as just. Like, no hereditary monarchy is probably going to be seen as just if you're living in a democracy. But in certain contexts, it is something that can be passively accepted by the viewer 
Um, and that is what we call inoffensive. I don't think that's inherently nefarious unless you would agree with me that Mario is imperialist uh, trash. I'm not using this as a way to criticize or condemn the film, which is a distinction that seems to fly wildly over Shad's head. So, you know, why, why would I say any of that? Uh, what, what, what view does it sort of support? I just think... So, because he mostly enjoys the film, what's the point in talking about anything what view does it really support? And so, he's trying to say there's less, there's less reason or point to explain why there's a need to go into his interpretation of the film. Again, trying to make a false equivalence here, that his standard of criticism is pointless, so therefore anyone criticizing the film for certain political interpretations is also pointless, when no, one is far more overt and one is definitely a stretch and has much more irrelevance to the overall plot, apart from basically setting the scene. Who is the, what's the Mushroom Kingdom, who's the Queen, just sets the scene where the girl boss moments in Mario actively robs Mario of certain heroic payoffs that would be very emotionally satisfying if they allowed Mario to achieve more. This is a clip of me explaining the value of media criticism, where I'm saying Saying that people can get jaded because they get the impression that all media analysis is just political team sports, right? <laughs> that, that you can't like actually try to understand something on like a cultural level or anything like that. So it has nothing to do with what he just said. Uh, but sure, in a film literally about two warring kingdoms, uh, what a ridiculous stretch. Uh, not like the film's woke propaganda, which is just so obvious, like how uh, Peach doesn't talk like this the whole time. <laughs> Let's go! Oh, hey, yes! Ah! Uh -huh. No! No! Yes! Mm -hmm. I can have him here this for two hours straight! Wait, doesn't he say in the review that he's glad that they changed Mario's original voice? They changed Peach. Why would they do that? Would it be because they think certain aspects of a girl being overly feminine to be problematic? See, I don't think that. I think it's great that girls are feminine, can act really girly and stuff like that. Let them embrace being a girl. Okay, and that seemed to be what Peach, Peach was a celebration of girliness, and it was a really fun, great thing. And they changed that because I get the impression that they, they find that problematic. They, and this is a consistent thing. In isolation, probably not as bad, all right? You could eat more easily, ignore it. But when you see consistently so many female characters seem to be depicted less feminine and more masculine, there's, there's a trend, an, an ideological agenda at place that uh, people like Jack try to say doesn't exist. They yeah, it's because they changed that? that, because they changed the, the voice actor, right? Which they also did for Mario, and for Luigi. Luigi, and Toad. They didn't do that with Donkey Kong, Mario, or Luigi, or Toad. Maybe a tiny bit for Toad because they pitched his voice up. Mm -hmm. So why is it a problem when it's Peach? And in what other way did they remove her femininity? She still dresses up in a pink dress for most of the movie. She's still a princess. Like, all of her outfits, literally, you know, because... And her Mario motorcycle. Fan, it, it didn't really change. And in fact, they st stuck to the material, right? Is it, is it just the fact that she isn't a damsel who has to be rescued? Yes. Oh. Yes. I wouldn't want to misrepresent you, Shad, as possibly thinking that part of femininity is being a damsel that must be rescued by a hero. Shad then goes on to clip me saying the words, none of it really matters, to go on a rant about how I just kind of nihilistically don't care about anything. None of it really matters. See, this is him basically... <laughs> Tempest in a teapot, this, this doesn't really matter. If you have the political leanings like me, where I love traditional morality, Christian values, okay, and even, you know, traditional stereotypical gender roles where I think when people embrace them, I don't know there are exceptions, okay, but for most people that embrace traditional roles and stuff like that, fatherhood, motherhood, they find great happiness and fulfillment. But there is an attack on traditional roles, okay? And so when you see in modern media, this presentation that traditional roles are problematic and wrong and they're trying to depict things that are not true to reality it 
does matter, okay? It matters a great deal. Which is funny because when you hear the full sentence those words are in, yeah. there's always been this contingent that will really just look at media not as media, but more just as this sort of culture war ball to toss. And, and it could be interchangeable with absolutely anything. You know, we could be talking about candy bars right now. We could be talking about M&Ms. Uh, we could be talking about shoes right now. No, none of it really matters. Uh, you realize that has uh, literally nothing to do with anything that's being said in that segment at all. Yeah, we have criticisms when people want to hijack brands and things we like to push political messages when they really should be apolitical, like M&Ms. Why, why on earth do they need to be political in any way, both left or right? It's dumb. When you say it's interchangeable, no, like people have criticisms when things that really shouldn't be political, like M&Ms, do get hijacked to push political propaganda, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like go go boots. <laughs> the hook is right here. Hook line sinker. <laughs> Explain to me how the green M&M was hijacked for the purposes of political propaganda. The changes for Peach clearly had woke ideological reasoning behind it. Okay, it didn't enhance the film narratively. It didn't it made it worse narratively at all. All right? The core of the Mario story is the damsel in distress story. They tried to somewhat have Mario coming in to save but the damsel in distress is Luigi, not Peach, okay? And it's less satisfying because, yeah, most guys, especially young boys and everything like that, they're more interested in saving the pretty princess. They will save the brother as well, but the pretty princess is the pretty one that they get a more heroic kind of buzz out of going and protecting because the pretty princess is usually depicted as more vulnerable. Because the pretty princess is usually depicted as more vulnerable. Than How did I misrepresent you again? Then the brother and they made you know, the brother, Luigi, look particularly helpless in the film, though he does have a good heroic moment, and I acknowledge it, that's one of my favorite parts in the film. So, I, none of this nuance is there, in his, and once again, Jack is trying to belittle the other side and make a mock of what actual objections we do have. What is the nuance take that you want me to take here? Yes, I agree. Little boys would have much preferred it if, if Luigi was a pretty lady instead. Because, you know, we care about our family, but not as much as the priest. Of course, it's just hardwired into us men that we care just a little bit more about pretty ladies than we do about our close just family members. Friends. I do appreciate at least that there's kind of like, it's almost like little landmines that you occasionally step on as you're responding to my grievous misrepresentation, where you end up like just babbling a restated version of the exact view that I portrayed in the video. I was afraid of spending two hours watching someone nitpick about his own stated issues with wokeness in children's media, uh, and instead what I got was two hours of someone more than happy to talk completely around those things. Uh, as it became increasingly apparent, nitpicking wasn't Shad's main concern. His main concern was making sure that you, the Mario supportive viewer know that in the end he's on your side like i said from the beginning i hope mario happening. does really well i didn't like the film but i'm delighted to see how well it's doing mario is uh, not nearly as woke as what the activists would want okay mario could absolutely have been belittled far, far more than what he was peach could have been a much bigger girl boss and everything it seems like that was even part and it, the intention for uh, Illumination to do, and Nintendo got them to tone it down, and so the agenda and intent was actually there, some still got through, but not completely. Mm. I thought covering Shad's response was interesting, because it's really such a microcosm of exactly the things I talked about in the video, specifically in the ways that the online riot has sought to kind of manicure their own views on woke media and woke propaganda based on popularity and viewer response, uh, both as a cheap political ploy and to grift. It's kind of sad because, as I point out in the video, I didn't think the Knights were an example of they this. They are themselves products of capitalism. They are corporations who just want to make money. Less expressing sincere beliefs as expressing whatever it will be that will pull an audience at that particular time. The audience they think will be the most lucrative, specifically. 
Um, I don't doubt that some of the people I've talked about genuinely just hold the opinions that they hold and it just happens to be that an audience has coalesced around them as a result. I respond with incredulity at your actual views that you express. But I never like call you a vile, dis like a vile, despicable, lying scumbag. You've done that while knowingly misrepresenting me at the very least, in the same exact way that you think I misrepresented you. So I thought this was an example of just people expressing their honest reactions to something, not really worrying what their audience might say about it. Uh, the whole reason I introduced the segment by referring to them as true believers. And I don't think I can honestly think that anymore. Uh, what seems to have happened is Shadowversity has continued pumping out content, making weak arguments about the woke propaganda of popular entertainment, and in this case seen a lot of pushback, and has decided the best way to correct this is to retcon his own stated views. Uh, I guess just hoping none of his viewers actually care enough to remember the words that came out of his own mouth. I'm not saying it's a problem when kids media puts women in positions of power or shows them as more competent than men. I just think that's what kids like better. Even while openly stating your own daughter didn't feel that way, which I guess you thought me telling my audience you specifically framing the things your child liked about the film as problems um, would have made you look Better? I think my daughter will actually love Peach because there's going to be a power fantasy kind of she's so awesome that she always is amazing. Mm. She's a, an insufferable, and I find that insufferable. That's right. a Mary Sue. It made her a less enjoyable character, and I can say it because having watched the film, she was less enjoyable. She was like. I, what really fun, great moments were there for Peach? The part where she got the ice flower and she had that big, like, fight scene in the wedding. That was a really cool moment for Peach. Oh wait, you didn't want that to be in the movie even though your daughter loved it. Peach is a girl boss and it robs Mari of certain heroic payoffs that would have made the film far more satisfying, which I explain in the review as well. I'd just like to go back to your whole thing about um, how like woke people demand that, you know, we have representation because you just can't relate to characters that don't look like you. Emotionally satisfying to who? Because, again, you seem to say that your daughter really liked the betrayal of Peach. It seems like she was pretty emotionally satisfied with seeing Peach do her own heroic things. So that isn't emotionally satisfying. For some reason, there's something about Peach as a character that that is less, it's less emotionally satisfying for you to see her succeed. What could it possibly be that's different about the characters of Mario and Peach, who are both main characters, who both have agency in the story? Obviously, we're not stupid, we know that there can be two main characters in a story. The fact is that views like Shad's are becoming increasingly unpopular as the woke brain worm continues to drill down deeper and deeper into even the most widely accepted popular entertainment. Woke is not just stuff that, you know, people on the right dislike, right? No, no, woke is a clear, overt, obvious movement that lo loves to push intersectionality and at its for more even fundamental thing, this idea of equality above all else, not equality of opportunity, but um, uh, equality of outcome, okay? Where they want everyone to have the same at the end of the day, regardless of merit, talent, and, and stuff, where it's all equal. Uh, that has very clear communistic kind of philosophy behind it and very much against that as well. Woke has also started to mean some new things to me in particular based on what they really try and push. For instance, woke is becoming um, very kind of synonymous to true racism and true sexism. Case in point, the fact that the woke movement loves to push racial segregation, which is a horribly racist notion. The woke movement wants to push the idea that you can't identify with people or characters that don't look like you. This is overt and clear, and it's intersexual kind of philosophy at its core right, is that you need to acknowledge the differences and pay attention to it and actually start to treat people differently based on intersectional kind of divisions, you know, race, gender, religion, and uh, sexual preference, and all that stuff, which encourages people to treat people differently 
based on the color of their skin. And it's also the same with sexism, that you need to treat people differently according to the, their sex, okay, in terms of offering opportunities and how they treat characters and how they're depicted and all that stuff. They don't actually want equality, and you can see this by feminist monopoly. It's not about equality. Feminist monopoly pays women more than men. Well, they actually want men to be oppressed and women to be elevated into the position of power that they perceived men to have been in throughout most of history, okay? It's not about equality in terms of feminism and a lot of the woke movement, all right? It's about supremacy. Oh, but they don't even know what, you know, woke is. Here it is. I've just explained it to you, but he's going to try and claim that because some people have trouble defining it in words like the way I do, therefore no one is capable of defining it, and then they're not actually, they don't even have a definition, it's just things that they dislike. Okay, so your first definition of woke is everything has to be equal. Your second definition of woke is everything has to be different for every individual group. So you've just given two definitions that directly contradict with each other. And if you want to turn around and be like, well, that's because the definition of woke is contradictory, maybe in your head because you don't know what it fucking means. Because it doesn't mean anything. So treating people differently because of the color of skin. But everyone's the same. But everybody needs to be treated yeah. the same, regardless of merit. It's very simple. Wokeness is when everyone has to be treated differently so that everyone can be treated the same because everyone is different and that means they have to be the same. It's a very clear and coherent definition of woke. This whole era of anti-woke witch hunts against the most inoffensive art is increasingly seen as kind of pathetic. And it just so happens Shadowversity's reaction was a good example of that sentiment. So I was inclined to just write off this response as a tantrum about this situation uh, until I read this comment that kind of gave me some pause. They have spent so long fighting the culture war against wokeness that it's taken a toll on their psyche. Everything that slightly resembles the enemy, even if there is no relation, will cause a knee-jerk reaction from these people. We need to tell them that it's okay, that not everything that bears slight resemblance to the enemy is actually the enemy. We need to tell them that we understand their concerns, but that this time, in this case, they're entirely unfounded. These are, realistically, people who've lived inside a bubble for a long time. A bubble where they can just blithely label whatever thing they want as a cynical reflection of woke indoctrination and not get a lot of pushback for it. To the point where I really don't think they're fully aware of what these opinions look like when they're exposed to oxygen. Like, when Shad gets mad about Princess Peach's pink pants and later says he was fine once they justified it with her riding a bike, it seems like he's unable to see that it is simply this reaction on the face of it uh, which is ridiculous. There never needed to be a justification for the outfit. The fact that there is only makes your instant disgust more silly, but the thing is what it is. This missing the forest for the trees is kind of the main problem here. A problem of facades. The thing about the woke brain worm is that once you start thinking this way, you do start to see ghosts everywhere. It becomes impossible to look at things like strong female characters or their unfeminine behaviors uh, without seeing an echo of woke ideologies trying to infiltrate your beloved kids media. But these men are knights. They are protectors of the realm. Uh, only in this case, their enemy is the woke, and in lieu of any clear sense of what this enemy really is or how they've done you any material harm, uh, the knights are instead forced to inquire wherever they can to detect the traces of wokeness around them. Uh, it couldn't be, for instance, that Illumination wanted to subvert the princess damsel in distress story by putting Peach in an active role uh, because they thought it would make the story more interesting and entertaining, uh, especially to young girls. It couldn't be that a series wants to show gay relationships and gay intimacy out of a sincere desire to reflect a real-life experience. Whether it be strong women or gay men or unjustified minority inclusion, all of this needs to be interpreted in the most cynical way possible. Once again, as woke, anti-woke team sports to serve a constantly morphing evil movement threatening your children by encouraging them to think in harmful ways.
Because it couldn't be that any of this actually matters to people. It couldn't be that, like you, they also like to see their relationships represented. This is why I have a really positive emotional reaction when I see fatherhood depicted mm. strongly, where a father's willing to sacrifice everything to save his children. That gets me. That gets me in the heart every time. And I can enjoy and connect to a film so much better. And, I, and even if I didn't understand the actual storytelling mechanics of what's going on, the result would be more positive. They also like to see characters who embody powerful traits that they aspire to. This is all a ploy to infect you with woke ideology. And that is the brain worm. And Shad, if you still disagree, you know you have one remaining option. Accept my duel, coward. Duel me, coward. You will pay for your crimes. So I've said the word woke about a hundred times more in the past week than I would ever like to say it uh, ever again. So I promise that this is my last culture war video for a while. Uh, I just thought it would make kind of an interesting addendum to the previous video because it sort of fits a lot of the patterns of the things that I was talking about. Uh, but I did it. I did it. It's done. It's done now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to use the support links underneath in the description. Uh, thank you so much to the patrons that are going by now. Uh, and also, also, I changed my opinion about uh, my favorite Mario character. Actually, my favorite character is uh, Roy Cooper. I also would absolutely love to talk to you about the concept of the traditional male hero Shad. Uh, honestly, like, yeah, if you want to really, like, get into that. Uh, like, isn't it interesting in your mind that kind of this masculine ideal is uh, the guy who goes to, like, fight and die on behalf of royalty? Uh, and, and then you have this, like, damsel ideal of someone who just kind of passively uh, supports the hero? Do you think maybe that there's, there's some kind of way that that could... That, that could be reflective of of something ideological. Um, I think I think that would make a really interesting conversation. Uh, but I mean, yeah, if I'm too sort of stupid to to understand uh, this conversation, uh, I understand that too. Oh yeah. So I have a request, Shad. So it's my understanding that you have over a hundred acres of land. Now I know you're using that land to build castles, which is like a really cool project. Uh, but the issue is that I can see. Um, why do we have castles? We have castles to defend things. Uh, and it seems to me that you don't really have an enemy faction in the Shadlands. I would like to request that I claim uh, one of those acres uh, to turn into my own kingdom uh, so that you can actually have in the Shadlands a permanent woke nemesis uh, within their own sort of fortress. We can have like some fun where it's like uh, maybe I can go to your castle and like paint stuff pink and then like you can maybe you know get up and, and fire arrows at me and stuff and then we can like duel sometimes and then I have to retreat back to, to my kingdom. It would add the energy and the life that I think is is necessary to complete the Shadlands. Just just think about it. Just think about it. Only one acre. One just one. Let me claim one acre of the Shadlands. Or I'll take it from you.